Welcome to the HP Online Teaching Assistant, an initiative of HP Education. Today we will explain how to create self-grading quizzes with Microsoft Forms. To access Microsoft Forms directly, we must have an Office 365 A1 Education account. To log in, we first go to the Office website. We log in as an educational user. Here we would look for the Microsoft Forms application and we would see this. If you do not have a quiz created, this screen will be empty. But if you already have one created, it will appear as it does to me. So let me explain a slight difference. Here you see on the left, new form and new quiz. The form is for consulting. In other words, it is not a tool that allows us to evaluate, but allows consultation or opinions about it. But with quiz, we can use it as an evaluation tool and include a grade. So to create our first quiz, we click New Quiz. As you can see, it shows up blank, so let's start filling it out. First, we name it. I, for one, would recommend that you always use an identifier. In this case, it would be ninth grade. In group or class, let's put B. The subject, which in this case I will put geography, and in theme, let's put Europe. Here, you can add a description of the exam i.e. information that may be of interest to the students or for them to take into account to guide them in the quiz, such as duration, 60 minutes, 40 minutes, half an hour, the number and types of questions, etc. Next, this button here will allow us in this first part of the title to insert an image. And we have three options, image search with Bing, from our OneDrive, or upload the images directly from our computer. If we select this, we will see a window where you choose the file corresponding to the image. But today, we're going to try to do a search for an image in the browser, directly in Forms. Here, we put a map of Europe. And in this case, it would display a series of images that you could select from or not. We could also select this option to ensure that images are copyright free and that we can use them freely. If I unchecked this option, it would show more images but they are not under the Creative Commons basics. Next, let's select this image and we click Add and it will appear. Now, how do you add questions? Easy, from the Add New option, several options will appear. Choice, Text, Rating, Date. Here, there is more. But just as the title of this session states, How to Create Self-Grading Quizzes, I want to show you which ones allow for self-grading. Choice, text, date, and ranking. Let's look at these four questions one by one, and I'll show you how they can self-grade. The first, choice, is for those questions that can be both single answer and multiple answer. Let's look at an example of a single answer. In the first question, we will put, what is the capital of Italy? And as possible answers, we will put Rome, Madrid, and here I can add as many options as I want. Just click Add Option and I'll put Berlin and Milan. Now, we already have our options for this question. Now, how do I indicate the correct answer to this question? First, we go to the correct answer, and to the right, a series of icons will appear. The first one is to remove the option. The second is to send a feedback message to students when they select this answer. For example, I could say, excellent answer, or if it was not the correct one, I could give a hint. And finally, this check mark will tell us what the correct answer is. Now let's go to the bottom to set up this question. How many points will this question be worth? What the quiz does is add up a series of points and then we can weigh it. For example, if I give this question a four, the next three, seven, and so on to the end. If we want to do it based on decimals, we will be able to weigh it. If not, we can give a score on the base of 100, on the base of 28 or 50, depending on our evaluation. Next question type, choice, from multiple answers. Which cities are found in Spain? Then we put Berlin, Madrid, Lisbon, Valencia, and Venice.
Perfect. Instead of having a single answer as correct, I have several. And look how this part on the left has changed. Instead of circles, squares now appear. Here, I can indicate that Madrid and Valencia are the correct answers. If we say that there are several answers, what the program will do is verify that the student selects both. If only one is selected, it will be considered as incorrect, just as if none were selected. In this case, I would have to mark both. But don't worry, because if, for example, I want to give 50% credit because one of the two was marked, I will always have the option to review it, and as a teacher, I can review it and change the grade. The next step is whether this question is required. What does this mean? When we send the quiz to the student, if we mark it as required, it will not allow the student to send the quiz back if the questions marked as required have not been answered. Let's look at more options. But where do we find them? Here, in the three dots, we have the shuffle option, which is highly recommended. This allows the options I have given all the students to appear in random order. Math. If I enable this option, it allows me to introduce mathematical language, both in the question and in the answers, so that the student can choose them. Subtitle. This part is for including help or some indicator to better comprehend, a boost for that question. And finally, add branching. What this allows is if a student selects Rome, Madrid, Berlin, or Milan, depending on how this question is answered, I can send another particular question, not to continue, but to show another question. Now we go to the next question type, text, which can be a short or long answer. I would like to clarify here that if I select long answer, it won't convert into a question that is self-graded, because to be a long answer, we would need to intervene to assign a score for this question. So, if we want to be directly self-grading, leave it as a short answer. Here, students must fill in this space with certain information and must enter it verbatim or numerically. Let me explain. For example, I could put, what is the capital of Germany? And, in add answer, you have to specify that the correct answer is Berlin. Or, I could enter various options as correct answers. For example, if the question was, how much is 2 plus 2, in correct answers, I could write 4 in letters or 4 as a number. Please note, just as in the title of the quiz, in the questions we also have the option to include images, in the same way as I explained before, image search, OneDrive, or upload from your computer. Additionally, we have the option to insert a video using a URL. As you can see, the structure of the questions in the configuration is very similar. Just change the classification. Now, in the case of 2 plus 2, the question is, can we restrict it to just a numerical answer? Yes, yes we can. How? We go to the three dots. We select Restrictions. Here we select the type of restrictions that we want to impose. In this case, I am interested in the answer being a number. The student will not be able to enter any text. It has to be only numbers. As you see here, I can also remove this option. There are also other types of restrictions. For example, it could be greater than, less than, equal to, all, depending on the type of question and how I want to adjust it. Let's go with the next question, which would be date. Keep in mind here the following. The format of this question forces the answer to be month, slash day, slash year. You need to specify all three for it to be correct. We recommend that, like many historical events, we only have the recorded year. How can we avoid this? We generate a text-like question, and we ask about the corresponding event. For example, we ask, what year did the French Revolution begin? And the correct answer would be 1789. And since we want to restrict it, we're going to impose a number restriction, so the student can only write the number corresponding to the year. That way, we wouldn't have to be so precise with the date part. And finally, we add a ranking question, which also allows it to self-grade. This is a question that allows the student to sort values, dates, or variables. In this case, for example, I would ask, Sort the following historical facts chronologically. Teachers, very important. I have to put the options in the correct order of response. 
When students are taking the quiz, they will find the options randomly. So here, I have to put French Revolution, First World War, and Spanish Civil War. We have the same options below, the score, whether it is required or not, and finally, subtotals or add branching. So teachers, these are our questions that are self-grading in Microsoft Forms. Now how could I view my quiz? If I go to this button up here and click Preview, I can see how my quiz looks. This is how students would see it on their computer and how it would look on their mobile phones. One detail I would like to mention is for those students who have visual or reading comprehension difficulties, we have this option. It is the Immersive Reader from Microsoft. If the student clicks on the button, you will have improved reading and hearing. I will show it to you quickly. As you can see, I was able to set text preferences, size, spacing, font, and themes. You can also select a few grammar options such as show syllables, highlight nouns, verbs, etc. In the reading preferences, if you want line focus or picture dictionary. And it would look like and sound like this when we click play. 9B Geography Europe Duration You can also set up voice speed and whether you want a male or female voice. Let's go back to our quiz. Let's look at the theme option. It serves to change the visual design of how we want the background to look. If I click this theme, as you can see, the background changes and the color scheme changes as well. In Share, I can choose how I share my quiz, whether through a link or a QR code. I can embed it in a website, in a blog, and so on or I can send it by mail directly to the users I want. Important, this option up here. If I want this quiz to be answered only by my students that have my domain, for example, at colegio.com, you must select this option. Only people in my organization can answer. In case not all students have an institutional email under the same domain, but have personal email accounts, you can mark this option. Anyone with the link can respond, because if not, users outside of your organization's domain will not be able to respond. For this example, I will assume that they are all in the same domain, and here we have the URL to share. This option is if we want to share our quiz as a template for others to use, and this would be if we want to send a link to collaborate on editing the quiz. For example, if I'm working with another teacher. And to configure this quiz, we go to these three dots up here on the right. And in Settings, we have the following options. If at the end of the quiz, I want to show results, my recommendation as a teacher is, I would opt to uncheck this box and that the users, our students, fill out this form and send it to me to review. That would be the best part because sometimes I like to review a few, even if they are self-graded, or for example, because I want to have an estimate of the grades afterwards. Who can fill out this form? Just like the previous one, if anyone can answer, we check this option. But the name of the student will not be recorded, nor will it be possible to determine a response per user. Now, if I mark only people in my organization can respond, I can decide whether to check these options so that the name of the student is recorded and there is only one answer per person. Recommendation? Leave them selected. The options for answers. The first option is that yes, answers are accepted. If I removed this, they will not be able to answer the quiz, since it is now not enabled to answer. If answers are already accepted, what I can do is indicate a start and a finish time. In this case, we will say that we have started at half past six, and as a finishing time, we will let it end at eight. This option here, Shuffle Questions, is very important. Regarding the questions where we have indicated that the answers are displayed randomly, if we select this option, Sort Questions Randomly. What Forms will do is that randomly each of the questions is shuffled, and then a single quiz or close to unique created for each of the students. If they try to get help from each other, with these shuffling options and taking into account the time given for completion of a quiz, we will have a high rate of avoiding this among our students. Finally, we are left with the personalization of the thank you message, 
which appears when the quiz is completed and sent. And if we want a confirmation to be sent to us, in other words, for each answer, the student receives a confirmation. Well, this is how our quiz would look. Now, how can we see the answers? Let's test it. We'd go to Preview and quickly fill out the quiz. Let's leave this to be considered as an error and we'll send it. Okay then, how do I verify these answers? You see that questions are listed here, and here are responses. We would then go to Responses. As I already have one, I get the overall summary of the responses to each of the questions. And if I want to review them, then I go to Review Answers. And here we see them individually. I can review each of the responses and adjust the score if necessary and give feedback. In this field, we could change it if more students had responded. From the three dots, we can publish the grades now so that the students can see them. So that would be all about self-grading quizzes. Thank you for watching this video offered by HP Online Teaching Assistant, an initiative of HP Education.